friends and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am so very glad that you clicked on this video today to join me in bringing you some amazing bookish content. And as you can see by today's title, I'm finally bringing you the long-awaited January wrap-up as well as the books I want to read and I'm currently working through for my February TBR, more like want to read list. I'm really trying to stay away from making like a firm list. I'm developing very much like a mood reading style. I kind of want to pick up as I go. That's why I read so many books at once. I'm literally going through right now three different books. <laughs> so it's like it just kind of helps me out because then I can put one down when I want something else. I love the variety. So more or less these are books that I just want to read this month that I'm hoping to read and Fingers crossed I will get them done. But I also want to talk to you about the books that I read or DNF'd or am currently still reading for my January TBR because like I mentioned in my last video, I'll be sure to link that down below. I went through a little bit of like a reading slump for about a week, literally like the last week of January. So I didn't read. And I kind of pulled back and focused on things more in my personal life and kind of just kind of let reading sit for a second. So I was really ambitious in the beginning of January with all the books I wanted to read but I didn't accomplish all of those. I actually DNF'd one of the books, chose not to read one of the books or even start it. I finished the rest of them, still listening to one of the audiobooks. I'm like an hour left in that. And then I have two books that I'm in the middle of right now. So I more or less got it done, but I was very ambitious and then I went through a really difficult reading slump. But going into February, I do have a smaller stack of books that I wanna work on. I realized that I am a slow reader. But based on the book, I can read fast, but I feel like in general, I'm a slower reader, which is okay. I feel like we all have our own paces. Some of us read really fast. Some of us read really slow. Some of us read one book in to, uh, to, from the beginning to the end. Some of us read multiple books. So I think it's just your personal preference, who you are as a reader, and all of that is perfect and okay. But yes, I want to talk to you guys about these books. Now, in the stack of books I'm going to show you from January, there are two books specifically I want to do like a separate review video on kind of spoiler kind of not spoiler i'll make sure to like notify you within the video that's going to be coming next week hopefully tuesday for you guys because one of the books i ended up dnfing and i want to talk about why i want to talk about if i'm ever going to get back into that book and then one of them i absolutely loved so i want to talk about those in a combined video together and then one of the books i'm currently reading or rather two of the books i'm currently reading right now they're a part of a series and once I get that book done, then a review video will be coming. So possibly sometime later this month or going into next month, just based on how things go. But yes, without further ado, I guess let's jump into my January wrap up and the books I want to read this month, February. All right, guys. So I guess we can start out with the January books, obviously. So if you saw a few videos back now, don't know how many far back it's been. I've been a little bit sparse. I've really been trying to up my game with uploading again. I'm super sorry that it's been very slow. Please bear with me. But as I can make content, I'm going to get it out for you guys. But the very first book that I read this year in 2023 was The Measure by Nikki Ehrlich. You guys, I tabbed it like nobody's business. Used a whole sheet of tabs and I love the book. This was unbelievable. I think it was the best book I could have possibly read as my first book going into 2023. I can't recommend it enough. It was as if I was reading nonfiction and this isn't nonfiction. And that's what I loved about it. It was my first hardcover read ever that I've ever read. So that was super exciting. And I loved it. I have a full review video of that. I'll make sure to link down below so that you guys can check it out. It has absolutely no spoilers in it. So you should be able to watch the video as well as pick up the book if you want. And I'll make sure to link all the books down below in the description as well. But yes, The Measure was the very first book I finished, loved it. It was super quick read for me as well because it was so engaging, which is really weird because I've kind of been against nonfiction and now that book almost like put me onto the idea of like, maybe you need to dive into some nonfiction. So I do wanna read Prince Harry's book, which I'll post a picture up here on the screen if you've never heard of it. It's in my, um, it's on my Goodreads. I really want to read that book. I watched the entire series of that on Netflix that they have and I absolutely loved it. So I definitely think that'll be my first nonfiction books that I like kind of dive into. So then the very next book I want to talk to you guys about is I finished book number two in the Blackwood and Virtue series by Ben and R. Coles. You guys, this was amazing. Book number one was chef's kiss i cannot describe it enough it is like a sci-fi galactica space pirates and i was really like turned off like i'm not gonna like that book that doesn't sound like my thing i'm more into like just regular your old know, fantasy fairies like that type of stuff not like sci-fi pirate this was amazing and the first book book number one i'll post it on the screen here i went and read that book cover to cover loved it super quick read 
it was just amazing but for the second book I decided to listen to it through audible but I have the book I didn't read it along with it but listening to it through audible was amazing because the narrator has a very nice accent so it worked very well with the characters but you guys I loved it what I can say with this book is I definitely 100% am gonna have a full like series review on it I believe it's a trilogy and hopefully book three will be coming out um this year from what I saw online but I want to talk to you guys about this because this was such a good series it was more than what you can you would have thought it would have been the only negative downfall I can say with both books so far although I gave them five stars and I recommend them is that the author lets the ending go and speeds it up really fast like you build it up to this really 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 big thing you're like oh my gosh these characters this interaction what's going to happen next for it kind of just to fall flat and the way the first book ended is very similar to the way the second book ended but I love it so much and I'm so invested in the characters that I'm okay with it but yeah I definitely will have a full review of this coming for you guys soon I need to make sure I like mark that somewhere so I don't forget this was so so good like I recommend the series so much I love it then the next book I read, which I also have recently posted the review video in my last video, is The Tarnished by E.S. Christensen. And uh, book number one is The Blameless. Love both of them. I tab this one up so much. Book three will be coming soon. Cannot wait. But yeah, this is a middle grade fantasy novel. It is wholesome. It is pure. It is good. It is so much found family, character development, so much love in this. You can actually feel it from the characters when you read it. It's something that you can recommend to literally anybody and I recommend it to anybody. I know that fantasy can be a difficult genre, especially with like all the world building and the different like factions and different characters and whatever like gifts they have and just all of it is kind of a lot. Um, and the names and just like everything that kind of goes along with it. But what I found with this is that yes, it's middle grade, which there are some middle grade novels that I feel like are quite intense as well. With this one, she writes so beautifully that it just kind of like gets you slowly into the realm of fantasy to a point where you're like, ooh, I need to pick something else up because I started reading book number one of this and then I then read the YA fantasy series, um, The Ash Princess by Laura Sebastian. And it was perfect because their premises were a little bit the same, princesses, a kingdom overthrown, kind of thing like that. But that was YA, a lot more intense, where this was like a little bit, this was also intense, but just middle grade, you know what I mean? So it was like, it was a great transition. And this was the first fantasy series I read that Ash Presents was the second. So I highly recommend this if you want to dive into fantasy, or if you're a little bit intimidated by the idea of fantasy, this would be a really good series to start with. I'll make sure to link it down below so that you guys can um, purchase it. It's available on Amazon, as well as I'm gonna link the video down below of this review, a spoiler-free review, if you want to kind of get a little bit of a background before you dive into it. Then I finished Assassin's Blade by Sarah J. Moss. You guys, I'm gonna have an entire review video coming with uh, for this book next week because we need to talk about it. But this is... This was literally my Goodreads review was literally this, like what I'm doing right now. Like I can't describe it. It was amazing. And I cannot wait to just dive into this series because this is, I'm starting book one this month, like the official book one. This is the prequel of the Throne of Glass series. This was unbelievable. I can say it was intense. There was character development in a way where it was like backwards where you see the character start really small and then like grow into this thing whereas this character was like really big and like she has it all together to this be like brought to nothing but she's developing so that was really exciting my heart crushed and shattered in a million pieces in this book um the devastation you feel for the character, although she doesn't know quite yet that she's going to be this devastated. Oh my gosh, it's just like your heart went out to her. I cannot say I, re I recommend this so very, very much. So I would say stay tuned for next week. I'm hoping Tuesday we'll see how it goes for this, but I'm going to go through a whole review on this and a part of me really wants to contain spoilers in it. Technically, this is the novella. So really going into book one, Obviously, like, there's a lot of people who haven't even read this. They literally just started book one and just kind of went on. This is something maybe they read after they read the whole series. So in a way, maybe it doesn't make that much sense. But, like, when I get into, like, the actual series of it, maybe I'll wait till I finish, like, 
certain amount of books and then do like a review and maybe do no spoilers. But this one, I almost feel like I just want to talk about it. And so this might be a spoiler giveaway for this one. Yeah, this was, it was amazing. It's so many emotions. Like your heart was just like built up, then broken, then drugged through the mud, then repatched. It was just like, this book that's also going to be in that video with kind of like a review is going to be Legend Board by Chasey Dion. I DNF this book and I got 84 pages in, finally got to part two and I thought I was reading for years. It was way too wordy for me. Even the audiobook, I was thinking, let me do the audiobook version, but 18 hours? No. And then I listened to the sample, the author, I her voice sounded like the character, but... She was reading too slow. I don't know. And then it's just like, I want to talk about it. I do think though, when I put my thoughts about this book out there in the open, it could be taken many different ways. But being a person who's African American, and this being written by an African American author, and the main character is African American, I was like, let me do this. But I thought, why not? Like, I need to, I feel like it's my, I need to do it. I need to branch into that and just read it. It's not that I and don't, but it's like, I don't think about it. I just pick up a book that I think is interesting. But I heard so much hype about this, and Bloodmark just recently came out, and I was like, oh my gosh, I really want to, you know, read this book. <sighs> and it's just not for me. I feel bad because I, I thought it was gonna be something, but I don't think it is. And I think the biggest thing for me is just like, the topic of race, I find with African American authors is a lot. And in my life growing up as a kid, in my own personal opinion, I wasn't raised to acknowledge or like maybe these things happen to me, you know what I mean? Like as a disadvantage, maybe because of, obviously because of my race and color of my skin, if I've encountered those things, I, which I have, but as a child, the way that my mother raised me and just my, just my family life, my friends, just the people who are in my life, I never experienced or was led into conversation or was sat down given a talk about the different things. Like I was really guarded and sheltered, like the news and things going on in the world. Even now as an adult, like I don't partake um, in things. Like I know things, but like I don't partake in things. So for me, it was a little bit like, <sighs> I'm not reading the news. I read to escape. And obviously she's an African-American author. Obviously the character is African-American. Obviously she has every right to put whatever she wants in her book, but it just kind of felt like when I read or I've read reviews of, or when I listen to people reviewing books by African-American authors, which I've looked at, a lot of them can follow that premise where race is a really big thing talked about. And for me, it's a little bit off-putting. Um, so I definitely want to talk to you a little bit more about the reasonings and just points in here that kind of just kind of stood out to me. But yeah, it is a DNF for me. I don't know when I'm going to pick it back up or if I'm going to pick it back up. Um, <clears throat> who knows, maybe in a few months time, I'm going to like want to, but at this rate, it's a no for me. I'm almost done with is Cinder by Marissa Mayer. And I really love it. It's a Cinderella retelling with like cyborgs and it's based in China, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Beijing. So it's really, really fun. I absolutely love it. As a little girl, I was never one who was like really, really into like princess and fairy tales and stuff like that. And I started reading the Chris Call for Land of Stories um, series and it like made me feel sad that as a little girl, I almost like kind of robbed her of that. It just wasn't my interest. I was more interested in like science and like playing school with my dolls and stuff like that. Like that was more my mindset. So as like reading the Land of Story series by Chris Coffer, I was almost like, oh my gosh, I wished it. The imagination would have been so amazing. So reading this, it's different because this is YA and it's like romancy in it. So it's just like really nice. It's like, oh my gosh, I wish I was a little girl who absolutely was just fascinated by Cinderella and Sleeping Beauty and Snow White and Ariel and all that, but I just wasn't. Um, so I really like it. When I finish this book and hopefully I think I'll just wait. Yeah, when I finish this book and then the rest of the books in the series, it's four. I think I'll do a review unless somebody wants a review of this at the end. Let me know down below again and I'll be sure to do it. But I think with this, I would like to keep all four books like and then talk about it at the end since it's like different princesses that kind of go along. But really love that. And then the very last book that I have right here is Harry Potter book number two, The Chamber of Secrets. I'm in the middle of this and I love it. Harry Potter 
I don't know what's taking me so long. I know I keep saying it and saying it and saying it, but you guys, I love it. I cannot believe it. I'm literally a Harry Potter fan at 26 after this. When did this come out in like 93? A long time ago. You know what I mean? And like the fact that I'm like just now, I don't even know. Someone let me know down below. But like it came out so long ago. Okay. And it's like, I love this so, 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 so much. So this is really amazing. This is a great series. I cannot recommend it enough. And obviously when I'm done with this book, there's going to be a review video because you know me. I like to talk about books and this is going to be a book I want to talk about. And then the very last book for my January TBR is The Titan's Curse by Rick Rorden. I'm in the middle of that. I have like an hour or two left. So that kind of wraps up all the books for January that I hope to read. I didn't get a chance to read. I DNF'd and what I thought about them. There will be some review videos coming obviously soon because that's what I like doing, talking about books. But to go into February, so... What my goal is for February is to pick like four or five books that like I want to read. I really hope I can get them done as well as the fact that I'm in between some, some series. So like as I finish book, I'll grab them. But like books that I want to read this month that is my goal to get them done would be Throne of Glass book number one in the Throne of Glass series. So I read the prequel. Now here's book number one. So I'm excited. Obviously, like we're going to follow the main character and see her like develop and see what she goes through. At the end of Assassin's Blade, like she was in it, in the thick of the issues. And so I cannot wait to see her redemption in book number one. So yeah, I'm super excited to to just get through this. It's like, it's exciting. Yeah, I, I cannot wait. Then I'm going to be reading book number two in the Land of Stories by Chris Colfer. Book number one, I loved it. I have a review video up on my channel if you haven't. This is a middle grade fantasy, just amazing, amazing series. And I cannot wait to get into this one. This is The Enchantress Returns. The cover is just stunning, just like book number one. So yeah, when I get an opportunity, I'm going to dive into this as well. The next book is By the Book by Amanda Sellett. I recently picked this up in my first book haul of 2023. It's a romance novel that follows the main character here who is kind of writing a little like novel or like um, a little outline for her friends of like these are red flag guys don't pay attention to them like do better do good for yourself and she's writing of like this is what you need to do this is who you need to avoid kind of thing and then unfortunately falls into the exact thing she's trying to prevent happening with someone in her life so I think it's super exciting and for the fact that Valentine's Day is next week I thought why not pop a romance book in the month of February and this will be the one that I do and then the very last book that I want to read this month, which I think will carry into November, into March just because of how big it is, is The Ordinary Monsters by J.M. Miro. I picked this book up after watching Naya Smiles, Naya Reads and Smiles. She just happened to like say it was good, so I picked it up. Like it's this massive hardcover book. So I can't wait to get through and get this done. But yeah, that concludes literally all of my books. So I have four books currently on my February hope to read list and um two books in my January list that I haven't finished yet that I'm in the middle of so yeah and then the one audiobook I do have two credits on audible so I'm debating on what I want to do like do I want to tandem like the ordinary monsters because how thick it is so yeah that kind of concludes this really talky talky video um I'm really glad that you guys clicked on it I really love this I really love this channel I know it seems like I've kind of taken a step back and taken a break and I think Sometimes you have a little bit of a priority shift. Sometimes things just kind of come up and you kind of have to just maneuver things. But like this has been such a help for me. It's been such an outlet for me. It's been an opportunity for me to be able to just have something. You know what I mean? Like it's I'm such an introverted person, although I seem super bubbly and intense on camera, which I am. But like in the grand scheme of things, I'm really introverted and I, I tend to draw into myself and whatnot. So having a channel is really good for me and it's like a good like just a good way to like open up and be myself and I really really love it so yeah I hope that you guys enjoy it do not forget to give it a thumbs up and hit your notification bell so you can be notified every single time I post a video and subscribe to my youtube channel and join the bookish fam because we're so nice and we have so much fun together and yes I will see you guys in my very next video